Hey guys, today will be the start of a new series that I've been wanting to do for a long, long time. I really want to get more hands on with everything. I love making and modding stuff and that's how I got started in the hobby. So this is episode one of the K-pop mech series where I'll be doing theme boards of a bunch of groups. Blackpink just had their long way to come back like a week ago. Probably the most popular Korean girl group internationally, so outside of Korea, uh, especially in the West. Tons of views on YouTube, they have international members, and yeah, just crazy, crazy popular. We'll also give away a copy of their new single, How You Like That, at the end of the video. For today's build, we have the Square X60 from iNet that I recently did a build video on. What I liked most about this board was its aesthetic design and it had a lot of different parts which straight away got me excited because it gives a lot of opportunity to mod it and to build on a theme. First off, personally I'm more of a rebel love but my girlfriend has been a massive Blackpink fan for a while, true Blink, so I hear a lot. She loves all of them but her bias is Lisa while mine is the main vocal Rosé uh, because she's, she's an Aussie girl, has the good old Australian accent which seems to amaze everyone and hopefully she doesn't lose it because I love hearing it. With Blackpink it's easy compared to other groups because their colours are straightforward. So we're going to make the case black, the plate pink, dye some GMK keycaps, change the bottom logo pieces and just about everything else. Okay so the case is made from polycarbonate so I really wanted to dye it black like uh, translucent black. And I saw this cool post on the Mechanical Keyboard subreddit and it seemed easy enough after watching a bunch of vids, but keeping it short, I absolutely stuffed it. I was scared of warping it, so I dunked it in at around 80 to 90 degrees Celsius because you can always go hotter, but yeah, turned out terrible. A few things. There's two components in the iDye poly pack. You have the dye and this color intensifier stuff. And it didn't seem to mix properly, resulting in a very uneven look. And the baking tray I used looked messed up after this. So I think that coating impacted on this as well. But wait, check this out. Amazing, right? Acetone? It was cleaning it nicely, but then I learned that it makes polycarbonate very brittle. And then I left it in too long. It made it all weird and put deep lines in it. It, it was so messed up. Unfortunately, of course, I won't be able to dye it anymore, but Gluing, filing, priming, and painting fixes it all. It sucks. I did want the translucent look, but now I have no choice but to make it opaque. The problem with painting parts that are supposed to tightly fit together is that paint adds thickness, especially if you want to do it properly, so you have primer, then the paint, and then a top coat. It, it all adds up. So I did try to keep the contact areas pretty thin, which is easier with an airbrush. What is my favourite Blackpink song? I'm gonna say really from Square Up. It's a bit more laid back and less aggressive than the other stuff, which is kind of the image, so a bit more chill. And yeah, just a love song. The plate is what makes this keyboard so unique and acts as the accent piece. It has a yellow e-coat, which is quite thin, so I just prime straight over it, no sanding. Blackpink's pink is actually quite light, uh, pretty pale. Of course it's not the exact colour, but I found Infectious Pink from Createx to be somewhat close. Now to the bottom. We have the weight which will paint pink, but more importantly these two poly pieces. The big Square X logo is just a simple rectangle, so I went to my mate Laser Ninja's place to yellow some logos out. Okay, favourite MV. They're all great productions, as with most groups. I'd say did it do do. I just like the whole aesthetic around Square Up, the promotions, the artwork and design, uh, the moving posters, all amazing. And for me, it was just the perfect balance, not being too grand and still fun looking, which I liked.
You want to see more terrible experimenting? If you're into keyboards, you know GMK keycaps, top tier stuff, expensive, and generally you don't want to mess with them, but I need something for this board. GMK Blink is a long way away, especially since it's on hold at the moment because of old mate YG, so let's try and dye them. I have dyed keycaps before, and many others have too, but they tend to be PBT while GMK is double shot ABS. The good thing about white on black is that you're only dyeing a small area uh, because you can't dye black to anything. I used the same brand I dye poly and this time I didn't use the intensify stuff because someone said not to, so I wasn't taking that risk. So using just one pack, I put the caps in at 70 degrees. I'm using a polypropylene colander because it apparently doesn't take on dye. I was monitoring the temperature constantly and mixing once in a while, but after an hour, close to nothing, uh, especially for the legends. So then I bumped it up to 80 degrees for 2 hours and some caps were taking colour, especially this backspace key but you can see that it was quite uneven and from here on out it was just a mixture of stuff. Dunking less caps, I added another packet of dye to hopefully make it more concentrated and legit like hours and hours, not much colour got in. But honestly, because the official black pink pink is so subdued, this was actually fine. But when I was doing it, it just looked quite close to white, even though the bottoms clearly showed that it was pink. So I kept pushing and wanting to get it darker, and that's where the danger comes from. From Wildcat's dying video, he recommended, I think, 70 degrees max, but those are different ABS caps. Personally, I didn't see any warping at 80 degrees, but once I bumped it higher just for a few minutes, the colour started to penetrate, however the longer keys started to warp. So I thought, okay, let's just do quick bursts. And this is like 90 degrees Celsius, and yeah, push too far. Many of the keys started to warp just a little bit, which sucks, but you know, this is how you find what your limits are, and I'm happy to be the one that sacrifices a $110 worth of plastic. <laughs> so if you really wanted to try and dye GMK caps, white and black would be a best bet just because you won't be able to see unevenness that easily and this is just for my setup because I haven't done this before so keeping it at 80 degrees celsius or lower was safe for me and I kept it there for like more than 5-6 hours so, so time in the pot wasn't an issue but the liquid will slowly evaporate. With a different pot, amount of water, brand of dye, colour of dye, number of packs, the use of my calander slash strainer, all of these are variables, so yeah, who knows what will happen if you change those up. I do have a set of Infinikey white on black, which are just PBT plastic, and will most definitely be easy to dye, and I'll be using those on the next episode. Now let's put it all together. I swapped out the stabs to these pink C3 ones, and for the switches, I have Gatoron Ink Black V2s that I grabbed from switch keys, and I lube them with Crytox 205 G0. Why are Blackpink so popular? Of course being part of YG Entertainment, being one of the big companies over there, it's a given. And they only have 4 members, so we have Jisoo, who's from South Korea, uh, Jenny is also from there but was in New Zealand for a while, Lisa is from Thailand, and of course Rosé from Australia. So that's pretty cool, and does make it a little easier for them to promote and connect with overseas audiences because of their English. Now this was the scary bit. Remember that this top black piece was broken before, and I only super glued it together. I sanded off most of the paint on the inside, otherwise it would be impossible to fit. And yeah, it was pretty hard, but I got it on there, and hopefully when it's all screwed together, it won't just burst apart. And to finish it off, I printed off some stickers. Oh, and uh, yeah, the pink dye on the white caps looked horrendous. Uneven, I tried to clean it, so I just airbrushed them, which ended up fine because I get to add more character. I played around a bunch on Illustrator, seeing what would work, and I just went with the classic GMK look for the Enzo key. It took me a while to come up with something, but this is perfect. Black pink in your area. 
I didn't want to copy GMK Blink, but I drew up a square up cube, no way around it, sorry. And finally Blink for the bottom right blocker, which is the official fandom name. And I went for something a little more edgy because this keyboard is way too neat for Blackpink. And here it is, all done. There's two ways to go about doing a black pink theme. Uh, you can either go mostly pink or mostly black. And that's what they do when they release their EPs and such. Usually there's two versions. I used pink as the accent color, which ended up looking super striking. Originally, I did want that black translucent look and yeah, it would have been really, really cool to succeed, but I would love to try it again on something else. And the caps. Yeah, I wrecked them, push too far. The colour looks good though, a little darker than what I should have done, but yeah, they warped, and listen to this. Yep, like half of them affected the key presses because of the warp, so it feels pretty terrible to type on, but it is quieter, so that's something. I ended up repainting the bottom, so it doesn't actually match the black of the top piece. Uh, the iNet logo took me ages because I kept messing up with a black blending with a pink, but that turned out so cool, and I'm happy I got to keep some branding on there. And for this piece, I turned the C and M letters around, just in case, that they're just two normal words, alright? Nothing sus. As a whole, I think adding a bit more edge and flair would have been something that I would have liked, which it's tough to do. You'd have to do some sort of custom keycaps, probably more artsy airbrushing. I don't know, but that's what Blackpink are known for, so I'll improve as the series continues. I made a lot of mistakes throughout this video, but we learn from these things, so I'm happy. And that's our first episode of the K-Pop Mech series. So keen on doing this and starting these new upcoming series. I know that this one won't appeal to everyone being K-Pop and all, uh, but I'm super excited for these other series that will be completely different to a lot of content we've seen. So let me know what you think, who's your bias, favourite song, and all that stuff in the comments. To enter the giveaway, just follow whatever I chuck in the description. The winner will receive a hard copy of their new single which comes with a photo book and all that cool stuff. So thank you for watching, coming up on the next episode we have a really really special board celebrating the debut of Red Velvet's subunit of Irene and Silgi, so stay tuned.